So, supersonic flow. And there's quite a few people at the top as well. We'll get there. Piece of paper as you go in, please. Grab that from there. All right, so. And we'll remind people about the bits of paper later on, I think, rather than everyone that comes in. I've incorporated a number of um, slides here from a rather good source um, by a Dr. De Kirk. So in that sense, we will, um, you'll see some of the pictures also come from him. Now, you haven't actually started yet on compressible flow. So it's a little bit of a jump, but let's talk about supersonics. Definition means we're travelling in a vehicle which is at Mach 1 or above, speed of sound or above. Speed of sound changes depending on what altitude you're at, but this is why at supersonic speeds we tend to refer to things in terms of Mach number and density. Subsonic speeds we tend to use pressure. Also you'll find that at low speeds we keep going on about Reynolds numbers, whereas at supersonic speeds we talk more about Mach numbers. Transonic, being a more awkward combination of the two, talks about Reynolds numbers and Mach numbers. Right, so what's a shock wave? I want you to imagine that you're in a boat, gliding nicely down the river. Someone else is doing all the hard work. And when you look from the front, you can actually see the water ahead of where you are, ahead of where your boat is, actually start to, if you like, break up into little waves, what we call a bow shock or a bow wave around the body. So obviously this is all subsonic, but we can't see air, but something similar is happening to our aircraft and the air in front of the aircraft as it's pushing its way through the air. Now, what happens is that subsonic flows, the information that the boat is coming is actually known ahead of time, hence why you can see this bow wave. The faster and faster we go, it actually doesn't have much effect. So in other words, by the time you got to supersonic, before you know it, it's actually gone, past. So uh, if you were standing there on the ground waiting for a supersonic aircraft to fly over you, you wouldn't hear it coming. Obviously, it's gone before you hear it coming. So therefore, what's happening is that as we go faster and faster, all these little waves are actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller distance. So they're, if you like, they're what we call it, their wavelength is reducing. And it gets to the point where we can't tell the different waves, even if we could actually see air. It begins to look very much like a crack. And so you can see here, this thing here, in front of this blunt body. You can see it's a sort of a, a typical bow shock. And it's as if we've cut through the flow. You can see a little vehicle in here, and we've got a shock wave here at the front and going down and at the back up and down and so on you can see around shuttle here there's one up there this vehicle down here at the bottom left is a ramjet or possibly a scramjet so it's flying anywhere from about Mach 3 upwards this is the nose of the vehicle it's traveling over to the left hand side and there's a shock wave and if you design this vehicle right you hit this particular lip here, and then it bounces inside and compresses the flow. So therefore, we sometimes use the shock wave to advantage rather than just loss. 